And welcome to part three of the J Soccer Vlog. Dozo! Dozo, you're just going to ask us. Uh, we're just um, hopefully entertaining you a little bit by talking through uh, what we like. Japanese and if we're football. not entertaining you, well, you know what you can do. Yes. Stay tuned, because it will get more entertaining later. Where are we at? Uh, Albert X Niigata 1, Cerezo Osaka 0. Well, this is, this is going to take 10 minutes by itself. I think it may well, because the first thing you need to explain to me, one without Kawamata. What's all that about? Kawamata, uh, Ray Sol have uh, lost three out of the last four. Um, they, had a, they had a decent run going before the World Cup. And they had a Kengo Kawamata, who was, mm. in many critics' eyes, the, the big man, the alternative mm. to all the, uh, the skillful young little boys, um, mm -hmm. to go to the World Cup. But he wasn't chosen. And uh, he's come out of the, uh, the World Cup break. He hasn't played. Mm. Uh, he's not injured. And there's lots of speculation that he's moving on. Could uh -huh. be overseas. But there is speculation, Richard, mm. that he could be staying within Japan. And it's just some agents have decided to you know, point out the fact that he could be playing for a bigger team. Funnily enough, the bigger teams that have been talked about are teams like Cerezo Osaka, who are about 10 paces below, oh. or uh, Yokohama F. Marinos, who are also below them in the league. <clears throat> but um, Kawamata has uh, not played, not featured for five games, I believe. But they, they won 1 0 this time against a free falling, let's face it, Cerezo Osaka. So They're in big strong. trouble. Appalling. Uh, Only two draws out of the last five, and the other three defeats. This is a team that expected to be challenging for the championship after laying out, I was going to say $10 million on Diego Forlan, but actually Cerezo or their owners, Yanmar, have laid out $4 million. The other $6 million is coming from various other sources, alleged to be Sky Perfect TV, oh. $3 million in return for using his image and oh. uh, interviews, and $3 million from the J-League itself. <laughs> now, there's a bit of a clash of interest, don't you think? Yeah, you would think so. It Apparently, sound quite and, right. and the player has said it himself in overseas interviews that he was approached by the J League, and then the J League offered him for teams. Mm. Now, that sounds a bit... It doesn't I sound... Well, it's not what you'd expect in, in English football, but what about American football, perhaps? Well, yeah, they do that in uh, yeah. MLS. You know, they, they grab a guy and then they yeah. try and sell him to franchises. Yeah, yeah. That word. So, um, but the fact is that if... If J League are actually paying some of the salary as well, just because oh. they can promote themselves overseas, then the other 17 J1 teams, plus J2, J3, and anyone mm. else in the world is probably thinking, well, we could use a bit of that money as well, don't you think? Mm. It so doesn't, doesn't sound fair. I've asked a few people out of the J League, and I've actually had no denials, but, mm. you know, it's like they don't want to lie, but they just, oh, and uh, so, oh, let's change the subject, shall we? You know? But then again, if, <laughs> if he was offered to all the teams, then, there, then it would be an even playing field, wouldn't it? Yeah, I suppose and, you're right. And so then, you know, maybe you should play one game for each team. <laughs> yeah, but I anyway, don't think it works so, that way. But but obviously, Cerezo have had to pay some of it. So, so there yeah. is a certain amount of fairness so there. Cerezo, Pro providing he was offered to every single team and then perhaps given to the highest bidder, I can sort of see, see, yeah, there is a certain amount of fairness in that. Although it's not the way we do things in the UK. You're yeah, quite you know, rude, aren't you? Aren't I rude? Aren't you rude? Kakitani's gone off to Basel. <laughs> Baal or Basel. FC Bale in Switzerland. I think that's a great move for Yo Chan. <laughs> Just pretending I, you know, you're on close terms. Oh, there, I know? thought you were. <clears throat> well, I met him a few times, but yeah, yeah. you never seen the guy to get close to really. Yoichi yeah. Kakutani moved to Basel. They'll be in the Champions League, and um, you know, without any disrespect to Basel, he should be able to get into the team and play regularly. So yeah, I think it's so. actually a good thing for him as opposed to going yeah. going to uh, I don't know, let's say Manchester City. Um, where he'd probably end up in the third team if he was lucky, yeah. <clears throat> or get loaned out to Melbourne, Melbourne City, or uh, Perhaps he would, New yeah. York Red Bulls, or whatever. The, I don't know. Whatever. At least it's a city. So, uh, yeah, good luck to Kakitani, but another one bites the dust from Cerezo. Mm. The problem is that um, the players seem to be groomed by the team, but even more by the agents, JSP, to just basically play, prove themselves, move on to the, the Bundesliga. There are very uh, strong ties with uh, a major called Thomas Croth in the Bundesliga. And I discovered something the other day. No. Actually, only yesterday, I discovered something. Would you like to know what it is? Oh, I would. I would. Or should we save it for the commercials? No, no. no. Have we got time? Thomas Croth, who is the uh, major connection of the uh, JSP players and the guy who basically has taken people like Kagawa and Kiyotaki and all these guys overseas, mm -hmm. he is the agent for Cerezo Osaka's new manager, Marco P. I'll say P because he's got a long name that I can't be able to Yeah, it's very difficult to pronounce. So Marco P is actually managed or agented by Thomas Croth. Now, I believe that is a huge clash of interests. To be honest, there was a similar situation in the UK with one of the clubs that I've been quite 
closely associated with. Mr. Milan Mandarich, by any chance? Uh, it wasn't Milan Mandarich, <laughs> no, but uh, maybe I should keep it nameless. But there was a certain club, they did go down as well, strangely enough. They brought in 13 or 15 players during the close season. All these players had the same agent, and so did the manager. Same agent, and look what happened. They got relegated. I'll say no more on that mm. subject, but if you want to know more, email me. Well, and in I'll this case, still won't tell you. in this case, is this is this featured in the book by Harry Redknapp, by any chance? Um, no, oh, it's oh, not. <coughs> which I brought along with me in case you want to read it. It's a good read. Well, I don't think that uh, the manager Marco P is anything to do with um, the players moving on. But I think the fact that he's there is going to make it a lot easier for this uh, Bundesliga agent to to take Japanese mm. players, uh, Cerezo players, from. And basically, I, I feel that uh, the problem with Cerezo as well as perhaps with uh, S. Pulse and even Albirex Niigata, and perhaps a few others, is that the agents come in, they sign up all the players. Let's say Cerezo have about 25 players on the books there that are serious first-team material, and six or seven of these guys have been told already that they're going to go overseas. You know, they're, they're, they're guaranteed to move overseas by these agents. So they're already looking to the future, yeah, they're saving themselves, all right? And then the other 18 players are thinking, well, maybe I might be able to make it, but they haven't talked to me yet, so they get a bit upset and get mm. down disheartened. And then the other few players that are, have got no chance of going overseas, but they realise that the decent players in their team are going to be gone in a year or two, and they lose the heart as well, because I think that I mean, basically the whole yeah. team has been undermined. I think the problem with it, when when this particular team that I was talking about earlier, what happened was which team we, is it? Yeah. Uh, I'm not so sure. I want to reveal it, but um, did they wear blue? Yes, they do wear yeah. blue, and I think you can guess. Yeah, but okay. It's not Portsmouth. <laughs> it's another oh, team that I've had a lot to do with. But anyway, the manager didn't last that long, thankfully. But the players he brought in lasted a lot longer than he did, and they weren't quality players. But they were all with the same agency, and you had to wonder why why were we signing all those players? Why? Mm. And, uh, we, we, he we. Said we. Yeah. There's a bit of a clue there. Yeah, there's a bit of a clue there. And yeah, I, I was certainly wondering at the time. I was, you know, most football fans are always pleased when you sign new players, but they're not always yeah, pleased yeah. when when they see the wage bill increase <laughs> to that level. And a lot of and the then, percentages go into an agent. Yeah, exactly. There's trouble at Mill. And uh, and you wonder how much pressure the agent puts on the manager. I'm not alleging anything. There's trouble at Mill. Oh, never mind. <clears throat> oh yeah. Shh, oh, shh, shh. Good little joke there. Anyway, you just wonder how much pressure the agent actually puts on the manager. So um, The manager will remain I nameless, I think. I think... Uh, <laughs> I'm dying to say the manager's name anyway. Yeah. Well, let's actually, have Actually, you might not have guessed. Of course I'm sure. Vigel to, well, we'll talk, we'll talk to Sendai 2, Omiya Ardija 2. Two teams that have had manager wars this year. Yeah. Sendai uh, signed up Graham Arnold from Australia. He lasted about three games, I think. <laughs> yeah. uh, didn't I think he got one point in his... You know, he was, Basically, he was getting uh, a lot of um, abuse. Flack is the word we're looking for. All right, flack from his players. Um, really, he did bought in, trying to be professional about his uh, mm. his training methods. They just wanted to hang around, take pictures of their dogs, put them on Instaprint mm. or Instagram, whatever it was, and they wanted to <clears> take <throat> pictures of their dogs. Oh, believe me, Omi Adija too. The pictures. There's more pictures of the players holding their dogs on on Twitter and Instagram than there are actually anything else. That, that's what they do in yeah. Omiya. This is Japan, welcome. Yeah. No, I've got a picture of my little It's just down the road from uh, Uruwa. Yeah, exactly. So, so how they're can living they get away with that? Yeah, they certainly are. Um, anyway, Sendai fired Graham Arnold, and um, from what I heard from inside, my, my contact inside there was it was it was always going to happen. The players just didn't like what he was doing, which was making the work a bit harder. And they weren't into that. So they boom, got rid of him, and uh, player power, done the job. Well, not but really. But Japanese players generally do work quite hard, don't they? Ooh. I yeah. thought so. I mean, well, just they're very professional. It depends who their agent is, I think. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's not going to No, I'm, they come across as very professional yes. compared compared to their counterparts overseas. Yeah. Certainly in England. Maybe. You don't. You wouldn't expect to see a J League player out smoking in a club, would you? No, you wouldn't. No, you're probably right. So. Like, so yeah. Jack, I've got a Jack, Jack wheelchairs now. Like, yeah. Mm, yeah. Well, it's not only him. I I notice uh, Ozil as well. I found a picture of him smoking. Balotelli. And uh, Rooney. Rooney. The yeah. list is endless. Well, Rooney's there well, with, with, his, with his grand. Oh, actually, it wasn't yeah, his yeah. grand, was it? But it was a friend. It's upsetting. It's, it's, I don't want to see that. I'll tell you what, we'll do in part four. We'll have, right. a, look, we'll have a quick a quick uh, look at Omiya Ardija and the chances of them finding a new manager. Okay.